one tonight. Let me just get right into it. Should we topic number one? Is the coup in Niger good or bad for Africa? Of course, this comes with a link that takes us to Twitter. Let me share my screen with you guys. Uh, right, this should be it. Be it. Oh uh, no, maybe, maybe it doesn't take us to Twitter. I'm sorry. Um, is this right? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm messing up. Hold on. It does take us to Twitter. Uh, here's this tweet by JP. All right. Make sure you guys can see it. Here's this tweet by JP. Uh, that says they don't give a damn about democracy. It's a two-minute video. I'll play it twice. We'll watch it, then we'll discuss. So in case you missed the news, Niger has had a military coup, and I'm letting you know right now, before all the Western media tells you they want democracy back in Niger, let me tell you the real reason for this coup and why not all coups are created equally. This is Mohamed Bazoum, the former, or current, depending on how you look at it, President of Niger. As you can see, he's a little bit cozy with Emmanuel Macron. This is important, and we're going to talk about it in a sense. You see, Macron is actually the president of France, and 70% of France's electricity comes from nuclear power. Niger is the fourth largest producer of uranium in the world, and guess who predominantly mines their uranium? A French company called Areva. Guess whose company provides most of the nuclear power to France? Areva. Now, despite Niger basically being a French colony, their president basically being a puppet of Macron in France, only one in seven people who live in Niger have power, despite the majority of their number one resource, which provides power, going to France basically for free. So because of the president's loyalty to Macron and unwillingness to fight the Nigerians, people in Niger literally can't keep their lights on if they've ever had lights at all. While France plunders Niger for its natural resources. And you're going to have plenty of Western media people and and leaders from the Western world coming out and saying they want democracy in Niger. But let's not forget, this is the same U.S. in France that overthrew Gaddafi in Libya. And we literally have open market slavery in Libya right now in 2023. And they haven't done anything about it because they don't care about democratically elected individuals unless they play for the team of the United States, France and NATO. And you, and you hear this talk of sanctions and I'm thinking to myself, like, how much more can you sanction them? You're literally taking everything they have already, which is why the coup even happened. But I digress. All calls for Western involvement in Niger are only driven by profiteering and plundering. They don't give a damn about democracy. And if they did, they wouldn't be in the situation this year to begin with. All right, let's uh, let's watch that one more time. So in case you missed the news, Niger has had a military coup. And I'm letting you know right now, before all the Western media tells you they want democracy back in Niger, let me tell you the real reason for this coup and why not all coups are created equally. This is Mohamed Bazoum, the former, or current, depending on how you look at it, president of Niger. As you can see, he's a little bit cozy with Emmanuel Macron. This is important, and we're going to talk about it in a sense. You see, Macron is actually the president of France, and 70% of France's electricity comes from nuclear power. Niger is the fourth largest producer of uranium in the world, and guess who predominantly mines their uranium? A French company called Areva. Guess whose company provides most of the nuclear power to France? Areva. Now, despite Niger basically being a French colony, their president basically being a puppet of Macron in France, only one in seven people who live in Niger have power, despite the majority of their number one resource, which provides power, going to France basically for free. So because of the president's loyalty to Macron and unwillingness to fight for Nigerians, people in Niger literally can't keep their lights on if they've ever had lights at all. While France plunders Niger for its natural resources. And you're going to have plenty of Western media people and and leaders from the Western world coming out and saying they want democracy in Niger. But let's not forget, this is the same U.S. in France 
that overthrew Gaddafi in Libya, and we literally have open market slavery in Libya right now in 2023, and they haven't done anything about it because they don't care about democratically elected individuals unless they play for the team of the United States, France, and NATO. And you and you hear this talk of sanctions, and I'm thinking to myself, like, how much more can you sanction them? You're literally taking everything they have already, which is why the coup even happened. But I digress. All calls for Western involvement in Niger are only driven by profiteering and plundering. They don't give a damn about democracy. And if they did, they wouldn't be in the situation in Niger to begin with. All right, so let me see if there was more to this uh, post. Seems not. So let me switch it over to another. Someone else posted on the Discord um, how France is mounting or getting ready to do an airstrike. So let's look at this link that came along from the BBC. It says Niger coup. A litmus test for democracy in West Africa. Uh, President Bola Tinubu, who is at the helm of regional superpower Nigeria, regards the coup across the border in Niger as a litmus test for democracy in West Africa. Having assumed the chairmanship of regional bloc uh, ECOWAS, uh, a mere three weeks ago, he was confronted with a major foreign policy challenge when the military seized <clears throat> power in Niger, a strategically, uh, strategic ally in the fight against militant Islamists wrecking havoc across much of West Africa. Mr. Tinubu had raised concerns about the coup in Burkina Faso, Mali, and Guinea when he rose to Nigeria's presidency in May, saying Echo was needed to strengthen its regional force to prevent further coups and to fight the militants. So when the Ni so when Niger's president, Mohamed Bazoum, was overthrown by his presidential guards last week, he responded swiftly by convening a summit of West African leaders at his presidential villa on Sunday. The regional bloc agreed to impose sanctions on Niger. This has led to electricity blackouts in Niger's capital, Niamey, and other major cities as Nigeria has cut off supplies, according to, Ni to Niger's power company. ECOWAS has, oh, sorry, ECOWAS also gave an ultimatum to Niger's junta, or junta, uh, hand back power to the elected president within a week, or ECOWAS will take, quote, all measures necessary to restore constitutional order, end the quote. Such measures may include the use of force and military chiefs uh, were to meet immediately, their statement added. Though Mr. Tinubu's own victory in February's presidential election is being challenged in the courts by opposition candidates who claim the result was rigged, he styles himself as a Democrat who took part in the campaign against military rule in Nigeria in the 1980s. Uh, quote, I think he sees the coup as an affront to his democratic credentials, particularly at a time when he is holding the chairmanship of ECOAS, said Wole Ajewale, a Nigerian analyst with the Institute for Security Studies. More crucially, the coup has a direct bearing on Nigeria. The two countries share a border which stretches more than 150, uh, sorry, 1,500 kilometers or 930 miles. And they have strong cultural and trade ties that date back to the pre-colonial era when a chunk of both were part of the Sokoto Caliphate. Their security is also intertwined. Military Islamist group Boko Haram has carried out attacks on both countries with a, mil with a, with a military force made up of troops from Nigeria, Niger, Chad, and Cameroon fighting them. The forces, strategic and technical partners include the UK, US, and France, with the latter two having military bases in Niger. While Niger accounted for about 4% of global uranium output in 2022, it is the world's seventh largest producer of uranium and has the highest grade uranium ore in Africa. Neither ECOAS nor its Western partners would want the radio 
active material used in both civilian and military settings to fall into the wrong hands in a region where militant Islamists, Islamists are active and Russia and the Wagner mercenary group are expanding their influence. After their coups, Mali and Burkina Faso pivoted towards Russia with the junta in Niger giving the impression that it could move in the same direction. Chad's leader, Mohammed Idris Deby, uh, who was put in power by his own army after his father was killed by rebel forces in 2021, went to Niger on Sunday to urge the junta to heed Echoes' ultimatum. Chad is not a member of the regional bloc, but Mr. Deby attended this meeting earlier on Sunday. As a military strongman, he has seen, he was seen as ideally placed to strike a rapport with the coup leaders and to urge them to step down. But the junta has so far refused. Instead, it has stepped up its rhetoric against both the West and ECOWAS and started its and, and thousands of its supporters took to the streets of Niger's capital, uh, Niami, on Sunday to back the coup. Some of them attacked the French embassy and waved pro-Russian flags. But it is unclear whether the military takeover has majority support in Niger. More than half of its citizens were satisfied with the way democracy worked in their country, according to a 2022 survey. Only Tanzania, Zambia, Sierra Leone, and Mauritania had a better democratic approval of the 36 African countries surveyed. However, Two-thirds of those surveys said that the military men could intervene when elected leaders abuse power. This is an argument that those who mount coups, as well as their supporters, often make in order to justify their actions. The hunters in Mali and Burkina Faso have warned the coups against military intervention in Niger, saying that it would be a declaration of war, and they would go defend their fellow coup leaders. So military intervention risks snowballing, into a full-scale conflict. However, ECOWAS has previously sent troops to numerous countries, including Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea-Bissau, and the Gambia, either to help the civil wars, reinstate deposed presidents, or to force out leaders who refuse to accept electoral defeat. These interventions were in accordance with its mandate to maintain, quote, peace, stability, and security within the region though its troops were also accused in some instances of human rights abuses. I'm, I'm, I'm going to end there. Um, I think we get the idea. So with that said, once again, shoot the breeze topic. Number one is the coup in Niger, good or bad for Africa. I'll, I'll be very interested to see the comments in the chat. Uh, KW Don 7 is here and he commented, the mulatto president of Niger has to go. We have already read destruction of black civilization by Chancellor Williams. Yeah, the mulatto problem. With that said, uh, Buono, what say you to the goings on in Niger, etc.? Yeah, it's not just Niger. It's Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, and another country, African country. Right now, um, uh, West Africa is almost in a powder keg situation that really could spread all throughout Africa in truth. You know, I'm mean? all throughout Africa. But it, and it'll be too long to go into all the different kind of moving parts that's happening within this particular conflict. So I'll just try to be brief with certain points. Um, it's interesting, though, how the BBC talks about Tanubu, um now as this democratically elected person, whereas you know, the, when the BBC, when he was running for office, they get into all kind of vagaries as to who he was prior to him running for president. That's interesting. That's very interesting. But I think it's good and bad. And I think it's good because, as we always discuss on the panel, some African leaders need to be removed. People who have been <coughs> seen as wanting, you know, the, this particular situation, you see the energy. Uh, the energy or, or the resources, the mineral resources that they are able to extract out of these countries, you know, 
back to their home country in France is into the billions and billions of dollars. And while the president and Niger is wealthy, taking having uh, meetings with the president, eating good food, the people from Niger are very poor. Same as Burkina Faso, same as same as Mali as well. You know, many of these lead, so-called leaders need to be removed. And <clears throat> they created this this organization called ECOWAS. You know, economics. I can't remember the the um, the that the whole uh, th terminology for the the the, the, the Echo West name, but I know they are West African countries, and it's I think Tinubu heads it up in Nigeria, and he is a person who is also France associated. You know, he is really following his paymasters in France. There are. The people in the Niger and Burkina Faso and, and Mali, they are trying to go for self. They saying France don't need to be in our country. We need to read the resort. And I've been listening to Africans talk about this particular issue in these areas. We need to have a right to self-determination and we're gonna do what we need to do. So if you're all coming by the on the behest of if ECOWAS say they're gonna gonna take military intervention into these countries, if you're all coming, we will leave the light on for you all. You know what I mean? So, because we ain't gonna just sit down and accept you all coming into our country at the behest of other people and just to take our resources and replace the puppets, the same puppets who've been there all along to do the same things that we're doing. We ain't willing to do that. We ain't willing to do that. So, it is what it is. You know, and when I, I hear sometimes when xenophobes talk about, oh, when they're talking about black immigrants, so you all need to go back to your home country and fix your country. Well, this is the situation where we try to fix the country, remove these people who they put in place, their countries put in place, and try to get some semblance of equity going. And then when you try to do that, what happens? What happens? They, you get attacked. So when, when they come into your country, steal your markets, economic markets, something, your natural resources, take it back to their country, home countries and use it for their own interests. And then you have black immigrants come in looking for their markets. They come in from their home countries looking for the resources you all and take away. You all tell them to go back and fix the country. Well, we, we attempted to do it now. We attempted to do it now by any means necessary. Now everybody in the uproar and say, well, you all need to back down and be quiet and accept, re return the puppet who been in office running this country for how many years and ain't giving the people them nothing. It's not going to happen that way, especially among the young Africans. You know what I mean? It's especially among, among the young Africans. So it's really a, almost like a powder keg situation because now you have external forces in, in, the, in the form of France and the Americas and, and Britain and Canada and everyone else. And then you have the, the, the people who are trying to be revolutionary. They need to, they, they're going to need military support and intervention as well. Where are they going to go? They're going to go to places like Russia. They're going to go to the enemies of these Western countries. So all that's going to be brewing in West Africa. And, and then you have West, when, then you have other Africans who are watching this from a distance and say, nah, you can't take advantage of my brothers and like that, you know. We're going to get in it. We're going to get in it. So it's, it's a, almost like a real powder keg situation that's happening. Now, my issue is when I say it's bad for Africa is usually the military, when they replace the, um, the so-called leaders who've been in office, they have no ideological leanings. And, and the, the ideas of the, the Jewish generals who probably would replace them, they are Muslims, a lot of these guys, heavy, they, they, they Muslims, they religious oriented, or they just don't know how to run countries. So now you have another problem on your hands. You have another problem in your heart because I don't think that military people should run countries. I think they should protect countries, but not run countries. You know, so and and that's not necessarily worked out in the best way. Look at Museveni in Uganda. You know, I mean, he, he for, for all intents and purposes, he became the a Western puppet after he overthrew the last leader there. The, I think the only real two real uh, uh, military men. When they took office after in a coup was the brother from um, Ghana, Rawlins, uh, Rawlins and uh, Sankara. And even though Sankara is a Marxist, he did something good for his country as well as a military man. But when you usually see military men come and and um, in in terms of creating coups, 
the country is still not run correctly because these brothers, they, they militarily uh, inclined, not necessarily, they don't understand how to necessarily govern a country. And then it's, it's just, it's just a whole hard, hard part of things is going on right now, but I feel like it's a powder keg situation. Do I feel like these, some of these people should be removed from office? Absolutely. But what is going to replace them should be something that is going to be progressive for the people that have to exist within these countries. And I don't necessarily know if military men if is the answer for it. I don't know. But I'll stop there. Yeah, ECOWAS is the uh, Economic Community of West African States, by the way. Um, KW7 says the xenophobes are neophytes when it comes to geopolitics. They are not at the grown-ups table they remain in a high chair. Well, that's a real, really well stated comment there, Caleb. You don't seven. Thank you for that. Um, Oni, is the coup with Niger good or bad for Africa? Oh, uh, it's very good, but <laughs> it's very good. But you know, I really, I, I want to say something. Um, a long time, not a long time ago, but a while back, somebody made a post somewhere, um, and they were like, you know, I always see Jamaican men in a certain way. And they were kind of like, you know, talking shit about Jamaicans. But I realized, right? Well, I realized a while back when we talk about the xenophobes in America, right? The xenophobes in America would say, oh man, you know, these black, these people in Africa, they would call us a kata or they would, they would do this and look at what they're doing over here. And like almost all the times they would always point to Nigeria, you know? And then, you know, when you look at South Africa, people would say, yo, they're, they're xenophobes because look how they treat other African groups. And you look at who the other African groups are, and it was the Yahoo boys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, was, it was the Nigerians. You know, it was whatever the area code is. And then I also when I realized, like, sometimes, like, the people who might be beefing with me or beefing with a lot of Pan-Africanists, generally, right? It's almost always Nigerians. And, and you know, I started a peep game. You know, I started a peep game. And and for a while, I was thinking, you know what? The three people who most against, like if you go by nationality, the three people most against Pan-Africanism, especially online, you'll see the African-Americans, you'll see the Nigerians, and you'll see the Somalians, right? But Somalia got its own reason. You get what I'm saying? I realized African-Americans and and Nigerians, the two largest English speaking, uh, well, two of the two of the largest English speaking black populations. Obviously, uh, African Americans are the largest in the Western Hemisphere, and and Nigerians are the largest in the Eastern Hemisphere, right? Those two populations, almost always the most anti Pan African populations out there. So what happened with the Niger coup is the Niger coup is, is, is necessary. Like, like Bona just said, when we talk about getting rid of these Ascabi, when we talk about getting rid of the traitors, we're talking about getting rid of the traitors. And, and see, Nigeria embarrassed me uh, last year. No, not last year, two years ago. You know, I remember I was talking to this lady, the sister. The sister was nice. You know, she was actually, uh, she was a Nigerian, but she was nice. She was into Nigerian politics. And she was like, man, after this guy, Buhari, done shot these Nigerians, oh, boy, man, he, ain't no way he's going to get reelected, right? Now, of course, he wasn't running again. But the idea was that Tinubu would be uh, basically him running again, right? So the idea is that, oh, Tinubu won't win, and Obi's going to win. And everybody was talking about Obi and Obi and Obi and Obi. This man, Tinubu, straight up stole the election in 4K. In four F and K, and, and people were like, "Yo, if Obi don't win, we are gonna riot. We are gonna do this. We are gonna do that. Nothing." And so, at, at, at that point in time, when I saw that in back, because I'm gonna tell you, I saw it in four K. Like people were sending me videos, like, "Yo, look at this man. This guy just walks up to the ballot box, takes it, and runs off, scatters the ballots." This guy is walking up, like a group of people just walked up with with, with, with guns and and told everybody, "Stop, hold it." And took the ballots away in 4K. Okay. Nobody did anything. They just said, okay, to the movie, you're the president now. Right? No challenge, no nothing. 
And so you like, what's wrong with these people? Because they were talking all this shit. Man, I'll tell you, man, if, if, if Obi don't win, it's going to be it. We're going we gonna to set, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Nothing. No sound, no peep. And and now, and I was like, look, you know what? I don't even care. I realize Nigeria gets what it gets. But see, now that Nigeria is attacking other countries, because that's the thing that I don't know if you, you, you mentioned that, but essentially the ECOWAS thing, the president of ECOWAS is uh, Tinubu. So the election in Nigeria wasn't just about Nigeria. It was about all the West Africa. Okay? And the fact that now this president is able to, uh, you know, is able is is trying to rally different African nations, including Senegal, to attack another African country. And remember, this is an a, 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 a economic economics group, right? Because they're trying to attack another country, you got to say to yourself, "Look, we as Pan Africanists, we should be writing off." The Americans and the Nigerians. You understand? Because, and, and especially, especially Nigeria. Because I realized, because I said, like I said, I saw this comment a while back. The guy was like, "Man, these, these Jamaicans, they're the problem." And you're like, first off, who says that? Nobody says that, right?" <laughs> he's like, "Man, them Nigerians, they just so." He's like, "Them Jamaicans, so arrogant and so thing." And you're like, nobody says this. What? But everybody, like I'm telling you, you go to South Africa, they talking about Nigeria. You go to this, they talk about Nigeria. You go to America, the whole ADOS movement, nine times out of ten, they talking shit about Nigerians. And we just make it seem like they're talking about African people. They they, they only say it African people because that's the only African people they know. You know? But obviously, Burkina Faso ain't got nothing. They ain't, ain't troubling no African American. No way. They ain't trying to compete with African Americans. No way. You know? Ain't, ain't doing no scams. Nothing. Right? I'm saying that, yeah, the, the Nigerian coup was, was brilliant. I love it. Okay? That's those don't that's what you're supposed to do. My issue is Nigeria not only trying to turn against Africa, turn against Niger. That's that's and and the fact that we're pretending like 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 everybody else sees it. But 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 we ignore it. Like I said, like, like even if we we go backtrack, we say, "Hey, who are the people that really have beef with Oni?" Almost all of them Nigeria. And why? Because only the Pan African. And, and you know, somebody actually did. I'll just say this: someone did a post where they said, uh, "Let's." Let, they said, "You know, they were talking about Nigeria. They were like, you know what? People say Nigerians got the best education. You know, the most highly educated, so on and so forth." And it's like he's like, "But that's the most highly miseducated people." And if you think about the miseducation of the Negro on the American side and the miseducation in Nigeria, right? You begin to see. Look. There is actually a problem. So nowadays, what because before I used to say people say, Hey man, what about this whole you know, you know, dissolution of you know of Nigeria? You know, what if Nigeria split into different countries? Blah 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 blah. Let it split because this shit is that that something wrong over there. That's all I'm saying. I appreciate that, Oni. Yeah, I think I uh I think I remember that comment about Jamaicans actually. Um Trigabi262 says Nigeria is a case study of a Lugata state in its most evolved stage. The combination of multiple groups that do not coexist and a high level domestication through Christianity. KW Don 7 says support what the enemy opposes. This is a quote, and oppose what the enemy supports. That's Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad. Earlier, Trigabi said a coup is I for the people or it's western back the, re the the resistance against this coup by many western blocks tells you everything you need to know with that said i want to welcome in an old friend of the show i haven't seen him here in a while uh kevin Kare, how are you this week i'm i'm good i'm just been uh in the background paying attention as i said i'm not a, a geopolitical um scientist but I'm loving what's going on. I support that 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 coup. I support it. You know, these these countries are getting ripped off by these Western European countries. You know, I, ju I just saw um, a video where I think the the old Burkina Faso president is being humiliated in front of his people. 
you know, they're, they're, the students are asking Macron, you know, why the, the electricity is always out in our universities. Like, oh, well, French is not the, the, we don't colonize this country anymore. You should go ask your president. He was just so arrogant about it. You know, it's just, it was just time, you know, that, that this, this happened. This is great. Get these people out of our country. Why are they taking the resources for free? And, and, and the people are suffering. But I'll, I'll, I'll pass though, but yeah. I think Macron actually humiliated him. Yeah, uh, and, and he walked away. He walked off. He said, yeah, he Macron, yeah. yeah, Macron was like, yeah, he's going to go fix the AC right now. You know, so he, he just basically called him a boy type thing. You know, real interesting, man. Does anyone else have any further comments on this topic? I, I find it just interesting, you know, how... By the way, what's up, Kev? It's long time, brother. Long time. Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm back, yeah. man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, man. It's good to hear your voice. Yeah, um, like I was saying, I find it interesting how so many the the front France has a hold on so many different um African countries to this day. And I would have thought that they would have at least tried to at least relinquish some some of the whole that the, the France government had over African countries, but it seemed like the Africans are trying to hold a lot to France. It seems like the Africans, it seems like some, let me say some, some Africans are trying to hold on to the French coattails and saying, no, daddy, don't leave us, don't, don't leave us alone by ourselves. We can't do it without you, daddy. You know, it's like, and then you have some Africans from Francophone countries and saying, am I F these guys, you know? Down with France, they need to go. So it's, it just it just seems um, interesting in terms of the push and pull that's going on um, in Africa. Like I say, I believe it's a powder keg situation, and I really don't want it to escalate. But I could see where it's actually going to go. I, I hope it doesn't, though. I really hope so. Uh, Mr. Anto, it, it's uh, it's a new world we're in. As I said, I've I've just been the last few months that I've I've I had to take a break. I was just kind of mentally overwhelmed with just the observation of where the world is going. It's like you're seeing like the world is just going back to what it was. It's like countries are just nationalizing. You know, look at Europe; it's going full right wing. Look at what happened in Italy. You know, look look at this idiot over here in, in America, uh, DeSantis. I'm glad you know he's he's not up in the polls. But it's just going to it's just going very far right at this point. You know, I don't blame these people for what's going on. But Koku, the one thing too I gotta look at in the background we gotta look at is Russia. You know, it's nice that they're helping, but what's their ulterior motive here? You know, and, and this Wagner group too. Yeah, I feel you on that. I, I do I do understand though that you know. Sometimes the enemies of your enemy is your friend. But yeah, but I don't want Africans to put all their eggs in a Russian basket yeah. or a Chinese can, basket, you know? Can I ask you this, though? The, uh, someone made a good point to me early in the week. You think they're pulling a Tucson where they're bringing in all these guys for their resources that end up kicking them out in the end? Yeah, well, I, I don't know if that's what's happening, but I hope that that is what's happening. I yeah. do. I would say this though um, about the Russian thing. Well, one, you know, I mean, the real the reality of the Russian thing is this, right? It's kind of like that that song Ghostbusters, right? Who are you gonna call? You know what I'm saying? Nigeria is priming to invade Niger. Okay, Nigeria actually cut off the electricity to Niger. You know what I'm saying? Niger is not in a position to fight Nigeria. In fact, the Nigerians were proudly boasted about, man, our military is so much bigger than this, blah, 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 blah. The thing is this, Nigeria is not bragging about being bigger military than Russia. Now, you might say, well, I don't think you should call Russia. But that's that's where, it's kind of like the situation where, you know, somebody does some fuck shit to you in your house, right? You could handle it. But sometimes the person that does the fuck shit, you probably can't handle it. So I'm not saying that I would personally call the police, but I completely understand if somebody calls the police in a situation where they can't hold it themselves. You know what I mean? I don't like that. But at the same time, 
I don't know what people really expect Niger to do if Russia won, if, if Niger, if Nigeria won, is cooling, heavy cooling. Two, talking about invading them. Three, already cut off their electricity. Four, the citizens of Nigeria, like I said, high cooling. They talking about we should starve them. Okay? We should starve them. We should cut off their food. We should do this and so forth. We should bomb them. We should do aerial stuff. Blah, 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 blah. The people in Nigeria are looking for blood. For what reason? I have no idea. You understand? I, I, I'm already at that point where I'm like, you know what? I think Nigerians are. Like, I I don't even, like, I know probably like, like two good Nigerians, real talk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> not, not two, maybe like four or something. But like, most people, I most Nigerians, ain't, 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 ain't it, right? But that said, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with the idea. Look, I don't like, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say I don't like Russia, right? But I'm going to say, if I was in the position, if I was just a new leader, just came into power, just got my people free, and then another country could turn off my lights, another country could so on and so forth, and then there's this country, there's, there, there, there's, a, there's a European country that's like, hey, you know what? I can handle that for you. Right? If I say, nah, fuck you, I'll handle this myself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to die. You know what's going to happen to this, to, to, to this, to this cool leader who's a good man? I, actually, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if I, yeah, but anyway. But like, you know what's going to happen to this cool leader if, if, the, if the original president is restored? You understand? You know what's going to happen to all, all, all these, uh, these, these military men if the original president is restored? You know? I mean, of course, they're not supposed to play with fire, but they already playing with fire. And I think, I think Maurice Bishop said it best. He said, the first rule of the revolution is the revolution must continue. You know? Not, but, you know, that's all I'm going to say. I, 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 don't, I don't want it to seem like, hey, you know what? I would say that these people had a tough choice. But at the same time, it's like, you, you know, it's, it's kind of like if you are in the water and a white boy throws you a, a raft, you know, not a raft, but a, a lifesaver, right? You know, like, okay, you got, like, do you take the lifesaver or do you say, fuck you, white boy, I don't need your lifesaver? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, because because I'll say even, like, for me, I'll say it this way. Like, sometimes I think about them, them zombie apocalypse shit. Now, I don't think it's real or nothing, or whatever. But I know that in the event of a zombie apocalypse, if black folk don't have their shit together, and it looks like black folk don't have their shit together, a lot of a lot of black people get into the position where they have to start begging white folk who have their shit together. You understand? And of course, a lot of those black folk get gunned down like idiots because you should have been preparing. But but I can't hold it against these new cool leaders uh, for not having their shit together because they just they was in power for a week. That's what I'm gonna say. Um, if I uh, was. If- Wait, you were saying about the zombie apocalypse. That one happened yesterday in Union Square. It was a big one in Union Square yesterday. Wait, what happened? Repeat that, camera guy. Oh, you talking about the zombie apocalypse? Yeah, there was a big uh, zombie apocalypse yesterday in Union Square. (laughs) Yeah, if 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 I was if I was those brothers in 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 Niger right now, and I knew. That these guys was at knocking at my door, coming to put back the same president who been doing a bunch of shit forever. I would put a bullet in his head, put a bullet in his head, and and or every all the people who I know, you know, who would probably be his generals and the people who will be inclined to replace him, and say y'all sort it out now since y'all gonna kick. Because if if they don't if they don't do that, all of them gonna gonna die, all of them. You know what I mean? So you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. You damned if you do. So if you're gonna put, if you say that you're gonna come, you coming in to replace the president. Since I have uh, power possession over the president right now, his house is surrounded. I would put a bullet in his head, and everyone who who was backing him on, on his presidency. So when you replace, when if you kill me, when you replace, you have to replace everybody, and then you don't know really who is who. You don't know who is who. You know what I mean? So if we lose, it have to be a zero sum game all around. Nobody wins. You know, scorched earth. That, I mean, that's what I would do. That's what I would. I don't know if these brothers would do it, but that's what I would do. Because it's no way 
if you replace this, if you if the, uh, the Nigerians along with other West African countries come, ECOWAS comes and invade that country and and put the the last president back in power, it's no way that president is gonna allow these people to remain alive. That's that's not gonna happen in Africa. If it does, it's un, it's an unprecedented thing. It's not they're not gonna live. So I mean, you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. I would get rid of him. So what's the what's the, if 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 you fight for him to come back to power, he's no longer he's no longer here. So you gotta deal with us. And if you want to deal with us, you gotta find some group you don't even know about that who are who are people from the nation, uh, people from the Niger, and you don't really know who's who. You don't know who their alliances are. You gotta have to do some background checks and all of that. I don't know if you wanna go through all of that, but that's what I would do in that particular circumstance. In the chat, uh, Trig Happy 262 reminds me of this incident that I saw about maybe like a month ago. He said, I wanted to bring a STB topic about this, but there was an Islamic group in IF who confronted IF people to not do their festival. Yeah, I saw that, Trig. Uh, they threatened this particular woman who I think is to run the festival, uh, told her that she can't do it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think only want to say something, but you have to keep it very brief. I want to move on to the next talk. No, nah, I didn't say nothing. Oh, okay. Uh, someone sounded like they were saying something. Uh, in any event, good good discussion. Uh, let's keep an eye on it. Shout out to Forecast, who's out there in the chat. Uh, shout out to Forecast. Make sure you check out his show. 